With .memory, we can profile our application's memory usage so we can optimize it, find memory leaks, and tackle other types of memory issues. In order to profile an application, we'll have to start and configure the profiler itself. Let's see. Once installed, .memory is available from the Visual Studio menu. We can use this menu here to profile our application startup project or profile any other application type. Do note that it's important to always profile applications in a release configuration, as that is what will eventually be deployed to production. We can also start .memory standalone. From here, we can do several things. We can profile pretty much any type of .NET application, as we will see in a bit. We can also attach to an existing process, which can run on our machine or on a remote server. That makes it easier to profile staging or production systems that need investigation. The last option is importing a previous profiling session, also known as a workspace. Profiling workspaces can be shared with other team members, so more than one person can investigate. It also lets us profile an application elsewhere and then study the results on our machine. Let's profile an application. .memory lets us profile many application types, typically any application written in .NET 2.0 or up. Standalone applications, WinRT, Silverlight, Web Development, WCF, IS hosted applications and so on. I'm going to profile a standalone application. We will have to provide a path to our application. If we enable advanced options, we can optionally pass in some command line arguments. If needed, we can also set up the working directory and choose to profile child processes that are created by our application. Next, we have to pick from the various profiling options. If we are interested in keeping track of where in our code an object is created, in which function and which stack trace, we can select to capture that data. Creation stack traces are pretty interesting if a memory leak is discovered and we want to know where an object is created and held in memory. Do note that adding more detail will slow down the application, because a lot of data needs to be captured from the .NET runtime. Ideally, profiling should be done with fewer options selected at first, and whenever we note something odd, or we know we need this information, we can enable it. Optionally, we can also use the Profiler API. By referencing the Profiler API assembly in our application, we can tell that memory exactly at which point it should start collecting data or take a snapshot. It can also be useful to ship an application with it, so we can let our users start that memory and the application can tell it to collect data which we can then later on analyze. To start the profiler, we can click Run. We will do that in a future video. The last thing I want to show here is the Attach to Process workflow where we can attach the profiler to an already running application on our machine or remote server. The only thing we cannot do here is specify all the options, such as collecting creation stack traces and memory traffic. The reason for that is that the .NET runtime only allows us to get that information by telling it that at the application start. And since our application is already running, we can no longer pick these options. Nevertheless, .memory will collect a lot of information about our application's memory usage. In our next videos, we will see how we can profile and explore the data that is captured in a profiling snapshot. Thank you for watching. See ya.